Okay, friends, welcome to today's MacMos tutorial session. And today we are going to do econometrics. Like, come 444, but the other target is in the community. But before then, I will be going to tell everyone watching this video to like, subscribe, and share so that anytime you put a video, you'll be able to have access to it with ease. Okay, friends, let's look at our objectives for today. This will be able to differentiate between exogeneity and endogeneity. And before this lecture ends, or at the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify the causes and effects of endogeneity. And by the end, you'll be able to bring out some of the statistical derivations of the causes and effects of endogeneity. Start with, let's try and introduce the cause. Okay. So we all can record this linear regression and we know that this is in the multiple case. So given this multiple linear regression and in the assumption when we are trying to estimate this linear regression here using ordinary mean squares, so play the assumption of ordinary mean squares. So let's look at point two, what he's trying to say. Point two says that in estimating the above linear regression model by ordinary mean squares or OLS technique. It is assumed that explanatory variables x are independent of the error term. That is, the covariance between the explanatory variable and the error term here is equal to zero. And what does this mean? So now, this is part of the assumptions under OLS, and I know you all can recall that. But then, what does this mean? What this means is that the explanatory variable are exogenous. So what's the meaning of exogenous? Then it means that if we say something is exogenous, then it means that there's no external influence. So that's the grammatical or the general meaning of something being exogenous. Okay, now let's come back to econometrics here. So now when we say the variable, exogenous variable here is exogenous, what is, it means is that exogenous variable are measured without error. So that's what this, the above assumption is trying to say, that the Exponential variable and the error thing here are supposed to be independent. And another meaning for exogeneity here means that the exponential variable does not belong to any system of equation that is x affects or predicts y and not the other way around. So meaning that x is supposed to predict y and y only, but then not the other way around, meaning that y cannot predict what x. So now when we cut when we come to this case where we have this uh, multiple linear regression, it is y equals x beta plus epsilon here. Then it means that if we say this linear regression here or multiple linear regression here is exogenous, then it means that this y is going to depend on x to assume its value, not the other way around, where x is depending on y to assume its value. Okay. So when this assumption holds that x is the only factor which predicts y here holds, then it means that the problem of exogeneity has arise or exogeneity exists. So now, if the explanatory variable is exogenous, what it also means is that we don't omit any important variable in the model. So that's what exogeneity uh, means. So yeah, so this is part of the introduction. So now let's go forward. So now to begin with, let's try and define some things here. So what is exogeneity? Exogeneity is said to have occurred when the explanatory variable x is independent of the error term stated that earlier, meaning the covariance between the exponential variable x prime and the error term here is supposed to be equal to zero. Okay, so it means that um, it means that the, the the x does not depend on the error term, or the error term does not have any influence or impact on the exponential variable. Now let's move. On because you've said a lot about the endogeneity in the previous slide. Now let's go to endogeneity. So now what is endogeneity? Endogeneity is said to have occurred when we violate the assumption of endogeneity. That is, when we violate this assumption here, 
the covariance of x prime in the error is equal to zero. Here, then it means that is, we have the problem of what endogeneity. What is the assumption of exogeneity? What the assumption of endogeneity says, says is that the explanatory variable here, that is x, should, it, should be independent of the error term. What does it mean? It means that the assumption that x predicting y and y not predicting x is validated. So it means that when you have endogeneity or there is a problem of endogeneity, x can predict y and at the same time y can also what? predict x. So it does that. Let's continue with our tutorial. Now, in this slide we are going to look at some of the causes of endogeneity. Okay, so now one major cause of endogeneity is error in variable. So when we say error in variable, it's when the explanatory variable that's x in a regression model, this so this is our multiple linear regression, is measured with error. So when we have some error okay, in our explanatory variable, then it means that we have error in variable. So this is a cause of endogeneity. So let's look at an example here. So this is a simple example that when we are giving inflation model yt, so this model here is given as or in terms of a simple linear regression. So given the um, inflation model yt equals alpha naught plus alpha one xt plus epsilon t where y is our CPI, that's consumer price index, and x here is our exchange rate, and our epsilon here is our residual, as we all know. Now, if exchange rate here is measured with L, okay, then it means that the inflation becomes, or the inflation model becomes this. So now, this is our exchange rate. So if we have some error term in our exchange rate, then now our exchange rate xt is now this instead of this so now instead of xt so now this now our new exchange rate so now when we substitute this xt into our inflation module that's yt we end up getting this so now when we substitute this here into xt this is what we get and when we expand and we simplify we end up getting yt to be equal to alpha naught plus alpha one xt plus alpha one mu one plus epsilon t. So now let me go back to our previous model, which is yt is equal to alpha naught plus alpha one xt plus epsilon t here. Our actual residual or our actual error thing here was just epsilon t. But then the unique thing we can find in our new inflation model here is that our new actual residual here includes a parameter. Now this is our new actual residual which is alpha 1 ut plus epsilon t. So this is our new actual residual. So now when we have a parameter in our actual residual then we see that the problem of endogeneity has what arose. Okay, so that's what it's trying to say. So anytime we get a parameter in the actual residual, then we have the problem of endogeneity. In this case, the covariance between the explanatory variable and the error term or the residual wouldn't be equal to zero. Then it means that the the um the error term has an impact on the explanatory variable. So then there exists some correlation, there exists some link between the error term and the explanatory variable. Let's look at another cause of um, endogeneity. Another cause of endogeneity is simultaneous determination of y and x. So now let's look at a simple example by means of considering our IS and LM equation. So if we have our IS equation as this and we have our LM equation as this, so as we all 
can recall that IS is our um, um, goods market and our uh, LM is our uh, money market. So now, in our goods market, they aim at attaining equilibrium. The same, likewise, in our money market, we want to get equilibrium. Okay, we want to reach equilibrium. So now, with this equation, we will solve them simultaneously in order to get our equilibrium output or yields and our equilibrium interest rates. But then, for this lecture, or for the sake or for the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to look out for the equilibrium output. So when we finish with this tutorial, you can go back and try and find out the equilibrium interest rate. So now we will solve this equation simultaneously. The next slide or lecture would give us the proof. So now in this slide, this ISL LM equation is what I have written here. So I'm trying to prove the equilibrium yield. So when this lecture ends, you can sit and go back and follow the same procedure to get the equilibrium interest rate. So let's continue. So solving equation one and two simultaneously, I'm going to, so in order to find the equilibrium yield, I'm going to substitute equation 2 that's my lm equation into my is equation that's equation 1 so when i do that wherever i see out in equation 1 here i'll substitute my lm equation in there so when i do that i end up getting this which is yt equals alpha naught plus alpha 1 all into beta naught plus beta 1 yt plus beta 2 nt plus epsilon 2t bracket closed plus alpha 2gt plus alpha 1t so now i want to find my equilibrium yield so i would have to solve for my yt but before then i would have to expand the bracket so now when i expand the bracket it means i'm going to multiply this alpha t through so when i multiply this alpha sorry alpha 1 here i end up getting yt to go to alpha naught so when i multiply alpha 1 by beta naught i get alpha 1 beta naught alpha 1 by beta 1 yt i end up getting alpha 1 beta 1 yt alpha 1 by beta 2 mt i end up getting alpha 1 beta 2 mt and when i multiply alpha 1 epsilon 2t i end up getting alpha 1 epsilon 2t so now my equation is now alpha yt to go to alpha naught plus alpha 1 beta beta naught plus alpha 1 beta 1 yt plus alpha 1 beta 2 mt plus alpha 1 epsilon 2t plus alpha 2 gt plus epsilon 1t so what next i want to solve for y so i would put like things so it means that when i'm grouping like things i will bring in my case i brought this expression to the left hand side to cross the cosine so now i now have yt minus alpha 1 beta 1 yt all to be equal to everything here so i'm solving for y so here my common factor here is yt so i would factor yt out and i'll end up getting 1 minus alpha 1 beta 1 then bracket goes then everything here so now i want yt so i would have to divide through by 1 minus alpha 1 beta 1 so when i do my division through I end up getting this. So now, when we go to our previous expression, this IS equation and LM equation, our error thing here didn't have any parameter associated with So look at the IS equation. We don't have any parameter. That's either alpha not alpha 1 or alpha 2. Any of them associated or linked to that. Likewise, when we look at our LM equation, we don't have any of our parameters that's beta not beta one beta two, attached to the error thing here. but then the unique thing we see here the unique thing we see here in our equilibrium yield is that now this is our intercept these are our slopes alpha beta two on one minus alpha one beta one and alpha two one minus on one minus alpha one beta one so these are our slopes but then this this are uh, this is our actual residual. So now, we, when we look at our actual residual, we now we can find 
a parameter which is alpha one associated or attached to it. So when this situation happens or this scenario happens, then you see that we have the problem of endogeneity. So let's go back to our previous slide. So this is it. So that's what we proved. So our ISL equation, when we solve them simultaneously, this is what we we get and this is the same thing we had here. So now, because of this parameter attached to our actual residual, we would have the problem of endogeneity, meaning that the explanatory variable here is now going to be dependent with the error of 10. Let's look at another cause. Another cause of endogeneity is omitted variable by us. So what does this mean? It means that when we omit a key variable, like it, it can cause endogeneity. And it's a problem because it makes the parameter or estimates of the parameter bias. So when we say something is biased, then the expect, expected value of the parameter will not give us the true value. Okay. So now, let's look at an example. So now, in this example, they give us a true demand function. And in our demand function, we had P as uh, the price of the product and Z as the price of the related product. And in the example, we assume that, or it is said that X is excluded in the estimation process. So when they were estimating for the model, they excluded X and this, uh, sorry, Z. And this is the, they gave a statistical relationship or a statistical notation for Z. And this is the statistical notation or the notation for Z. So now, the next slide will try and explain the proof here. So now, this is the proof. So given the demand function in this form, Q to be equal to beta naught plus beta 1 P plus beta Z, Z plus epsilon Q. So now when they were meeting, from our question, they omitted Z and Z was given as this. So now we would have to fix Z back. So you would have to substitute Z into the demand function and we do our estimation. So now when we substitute Z into our demand function, we end up getting beta naught plus beta substitute P, P plus beta Z. So when you put Z here, this is what we end up getting here, plus our epsilon Q. Plus our epsilon Q. So we would expand and simplify, meaning we expand and we put like things. So we multiply this bracket by beta z, and after expansion, this is what we get. So when we put like things here, this will now be our intercept, this will now be our slope, and this will now be our actual error. So now, this is another thing. So in our actual error here, we can find out that we have a parameter linked to it. So when this happens, we have the problem of what endogeneity. That's it. That's the same way when we we, we solve y and rt simultaneously. Our uh, actual you see that had a parameter. So uh, when we omit um, how do you call it a relevant or a key variable to we end up getting the problem of endogeneity. So that's what this slide is. And the next slide will explain it for us. So now. This is what he's saying. The omitted variable model has a residual which has the parameter beta 2. Okay, so this is it. So now the omitted variable will now have the uh, um, beta z here attached to the actual residual. And as I said earlier, we had this as our, this our, our intercept now. This is, this is our slope now. And this is our actual residual. No? Let's continue. Let's look at the, the effects or some of the effects associated with endogeneity. A regression model characterized by endogeneity problem meets the estimated parameters one bias. So when you see it's bias, it means that when you find the expected value of the estimated parameter, we don't get the true parameter. That's what it's trying to say. Bias means expectation of beta cap is not equal to beta. That is the estimated parameter is not equal to the true parameter. So that's what I say. So inconsistent, that is when the sample size or as the sample increases, the estimated parameter does not converge to the true parameter. That's what we have here. This is also an effect of 
and originating. And all this problem arises because the correlation between the exponential variable and the residual is endogenous, meaning there exists a relationship between the exponential variable and the error or residual. So the covariance between the error term and the residual now is not equal to zero. So now let's try and prove the biasness here. The effect. So now proof for biasness that's when exploitation of beta cap is not equal to beta. So that's what we are going to prove here. So now we all can recall what can we call our multiple linear regression? So, given a multiple linear regression of this form as our equation one, that's why not different from x beta plus epsilon i. And now we can recall that when we want to estimate for beta cap here, this is how we estimate for beta cap s prime x or inverse s prime y. So, our estimate for beta here is our equation two. Now, we are going to solve equation 1 and 2 simultaneously. So now, in equation 2, we have y here. So, solving it simultaneously using substitution, I'll substitute y, that's my equation 1, into my equation 2. So, this is what I wrote here. So now, when I do the substitution, I'll end up getting my beta cap here to be equal to s prime x or inverse s prime. Now, my y is now this. So, everything here will be here as beta plus epsilon i. So now I expand the bracket. When I expand the bracket, this will multiply everything here. So I end up getting beta cap to be equal to s prime x all inverse s prime y beta. And when I multiply it by the epsilon, I end up getting s prime x all inverse s prime epsilon. That's my equation three. So now let's recall. Can we call that s prime x all inverse s prime x here? is equal to 1. So when we do that substitution here, I'll end up getting beta cap to be equal to beta cap to be equal to beta plus s prime s inverse s prime epsilon here. Okay. So now when I run expectation through here, expectation of beta cap, now expectation of the constant, that's beta here, I'll get beta. And when I run expectation through, I'll end up getting s prime s on inverse expectation of s prime epsilon. And now we can see that expectation of this beta cap, that estimate here, is not equal to the true parameter, which is beta. So we have the problem of bias. So we've proved for the biasness. So in our next lecture, we try and prove for the second, that's the inconsistency, and we try and work out for look out for some example and solve it. And this is the end of our tutorial for today. In our next lecture, we try and get an example. And we saw before we begin our next lecture. Thank you for your time. Kindly like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.